Hey everyone, welcome to the Desi Outdoorsman. I'm your host, Goher. On this channel, we provide introductory information for people who are new to the outdoors and generally don't know what to do to get outside. So if that's something that you're into, then feel free to subscribe to this channel. This is a brand new channel and it'll help me out a lot. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The links will be in the description below. So I'm going to cover four types of places where you could go camping. National parks, state parks, KOAs, and dispersed or primitive camping. Regardless of which of the four options you choose, make sure you check availability well in advance. Places tend to fill up pretty quickly. The first two options, national parks and state parks, I'm going to talk about them as though they're one option. Because there's a lot of similarities between national parks and state parks. The only difference between national parks and state parks are that national parks are maintained and operated by the federal government and state parks are maintained and operated by your individual state. But in terms of the amenities that they provide, the look and feel of uh, campsites, they're going to be about the same. And in terms of restrictions, amenities that they have, um, those are also going to be about the same. Um, both national parks and state parks are going to have some kind of a fee. It's usually on the order of $20, $25 a night. It's not that much, but you're going to have to check the individual site that you're going to want to camp at and just make sure of the fees. National parks and state parks have different amenities that they provide. Some provide full bathrooms. Usually they only provide vaulted toilets, which is essentially a porta potty. Some have running water. You just have to check the um, campsite that you're going to, it, and the campsite will have the amenities listed that they provide at that individual site. In either case, national parks and state parks are both going to have some kind of a fire pit that you can use to build a campfire. You're just going to have to make sure that there are no fire bans or fire restrictions in effect before you go. And if there are, of course, you need to abide by the restrictions that are in effect. For national parks, you can make reservations or check availability at recreation.gov. I'll have a link to that in the description below. For state parks, I would just Google your individual state. Both national parks and state parks have first come, first serve availability or the ability to make reservations. If you want to make a reservation, you can do that depending on the site, but reservations a lot of time fill up in advance, especially on the weekend, so make sure you're planning your trip well in advance. A lot of national parks, if they're very famous parks, they might even fill up six to nine months in advance. So just make sure you're planning in advance. If the site that you're going to is first come first serve, that's gonna be a lot easier for you to get to and you're not gonna have to worry about making plans very far in advance. So KOA is different from national parks and state parks. KOA is a private company where they build and maintain campsites themselves. With KOAs, uh, you are, of course, going to have to make reservations in advance. And again, just like with national parks and state parks, uh, those sites can fill up pretty quickly. You just have to make sure you're checking in advance. Um, KOAs are going to have a lot more amenities than a national park or a state park. They're, you're usually going to find full bathrooms. Um, in some cases, you might find electricity and even Wi-Fi, a general store. They might even have RV and cabin rentals at a KOA. So KOAs are going to be more comfortable than a national park or a state park. I don't think that they're going to be necessarily as beautiful a location. It just really depends on where you're going. If you're worried about electricity and Wi-Fi and if you want to make sure you're going to have a full bathroom with showers and laundry and what have you and access to a convenience store or something, then I would go with a KOA. And if it's your first time camping, a KOA might also be a little bit easier to acclimate yourself to. The last type of location I'm going to talk about is dispersed camping or primitive camping. And if you're going camping for your very first time, I would not recommend dispersed or primitive camping. Uh, dispersed or primitive camping is essentially just going out into the middle of nowhere or getting off a trail and going to a location where it's not a designated campsite and just camping out in the wilderness. Um, you're obviously not going to have any amenities. You're not going to have picnic tables. You're not going to have bathrooms. You're not going to have a fire pit. It's You're just out in the open. The advantages to primitive or dispersed camping is that 
you know, you're very far away from people. You can probably get to a more beautiful location. There are no amenities that are associated with it. So I would do a lot of research prior to doing it. If you've never gone camping before, that's an option that I wouldn't recommend. Oh, don't stress. Find a place that looks appealing to you. Make sure you are planning your trip in advance. If you're planning on going first come first serve, again, you don't have to plan as far in advance as if you're going to be making a reservation. Just get out there and enjoy it. In the next video, I'm going to cover how to pick a tent. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and please follow me on Instagram and Twitter.